Indeed, on this Sunday morning, delighted to have Mark Hennig join us uh, in the wake of what had to be, I suppose, the most awkward position for an outfit since Mary Lou Whitney uh, in, in, the, in the Belmont, uh, where, uh, where Birdstone beats Smarty Jones. Uh, you're either, uh, you know, delighted, of course, that you win the, the Boston Spa uh, with Strike Charmer, but at the same time, uh, you dashed uh, all the, the hopes and dreams of, of the Lady Eli fans. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, I think it was a win for Lady Eli just to be Absolutely. there, be there, and be back, back on the racetrack and, and running up to that level. I mean, she, she obviously ran a, ran a great race, and you know, any any time a horse goes through that, um, you know, that it's it's a tough tough thing for horses. And as a horseman, you you really appreciate everybody's work to get that mare back to where she was. So. Um, we didn't mind beating her, and that's what we're, that's what we're there for. And uh, they they never just hand out the trophy, but um, you know I, I think our our mare just happened to be better. It was a good time to face her too. That's a good point, and it was one of those circumstances where uh, horse players had to make a decision about you know, a couple of places on the card, whether it was Flincher, you know, can Flincher be beat? The other question was, can Lady Eli, you know, will Lady Eli win? Uh, is she vulnerable here? And she ran okay, and in fact, uh, you know, carry us through the race. We'll watch some video and give us some thoughts. Uh, talk about uh, your conversation with Junior Alvarado, and then uh, certainly as the pace unfolds, you have to be thrilled that they were going so fast. We were. I mean, I, I, we, we had talked about it. And we, we thought that uh, the main thing was to be, you know, be wherever the pace dictated. We lie. Um, you know, if, if they weren't going to, if they, were, if the rabbit did her job, they were probably going to be rolling up front. Um, and certainly, as it turned out, you know, Junior made the right choice just to kind of sit in behind Lady Eli. He had wheeled out here uh, pretty wide, I think, which was also a smart move. Don't go down and engage a, a mare like that because, you know, you go engage Wake her, her she might fight a little harder. Um, but I, I thought, you know, it was, it was just a great effort. It was a good field and a good race. Yeah, well, it's a, a great win for her and uh, multiple, multiple graded stake winner uh, for not just for you, of course, uh, the time she spent with Davy Carroll and uh, for Don Adam in Cortland Farm. You're wearing the Cortland hat this morning, appropriately. Am, yes, Mr. Adam's been great to us. He, he, he came to us last year about this time. It's given us a great opportunity. We bought a lot of nice babies, and I think we got a lot of moments like this ahead. You know, and, and we'll talk more about Strike Charmer and about uh, what lies ahead, including the potential for uh, the Breeders' Cup Philly and Mare Turf, but, uh, and, the, and the Flower Bowl. Uh, the, there's a story here, Mark, and, and it, involves, it involves the industry and, and the business in a lot of ways. And when the news that Dave Carroll was going to, was going to disband his, his racing stable, and go to work for Mark Cassie, running Cassie's Keeneland Barn. Right. And obviously it's a great opportunity for, for Mark Cassie and his clients to get a, a guy like Dave Carroll you know, looking after the horses. And then at the same time, there was the opportunity for you to get some of the horses that Mr. Adam dispersed and, and sent in other directions. Correct, yes, definitely. I'm a, Mr. Adam moved all those horses uh, you know, basically at the end of this meet last year, and, and you know, we we went to the sale. He bought a lot of nice babies, and uh, you know, happy David landed on his feet, and certainly working for a great outfit. Well, the potential for this horse, and and you know, she, they don't you don't think of her necessarily in the beholder category, but she's a six-year-old mare. And talk a little bit about the decision making you know, that that kept her on the racetrack this year because she could just as easily have entered you know the Cortland broodmare band uh, for sure i mean she's she she already had enough accomplished yeah. i think you know we had conversations i think mr adam didn't have a lot of horses running at the time when when it was time to make that decision and we we got into the uh, middle of the season there at, at Gulfstream. that turf was very firm down there and 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 pretty chewed up and you know, he kind of was committed to running her this year, and uh, she, we felt like she was doing well enough, but we also felt like if we were going to run her through the year and be committed to it, the best thing to do was to back off and, and wait until we got back up north, which, uh, you know, I thought it was great that Mr. Adam allowed us to do that, and, and uh, 
and it's you know it's gone on to bear some bear some nice races for us. Well, and she also feels like a horse that uh, thrives on work too. It, it, it just the kind of a yeah. You know, I I really have. I don't train her very hard, you know. I've lightened up her schedule. She's done. She she had like a little easy half mile maintenance breeze between those two races, um, and that and that's kind of the way that she seems to to uh, really flourish at. She's she's been. Uh, I think if you went through her work tab, she doesn't have a lot of works in the last in the last four months. But uh, but that's what that's what works best for her, and you know her numbers are bearing that out. And interestingly, you look at you know you look at the schedule that that uh, she's had, and you go back to that race at Aqueduct in April, the mile race, that plenty of grace. Right. That ended up being like a, a super productive race. Everybody that was involved in there has gone on to good things this summer. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that day we would have run better if we'd have had Chad's Rabbit in there. Yet, like we <laughs> did yesterday, but. Uh, you know, that race just had no pace in it that day, and I thought she really, you know, really moved forward that day off the layoff. It was, she was fresh and and uh, finishing against 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 basically no pace. And uh, you know, Miss McDougal kind of ran off with it that day, but uh, you know, she just continues to get better, which you you don't see a lot of times in these older mares. You know, you you kind of sit there and wait for them to decide they don't want to do it anymore. Um, but she's, she just happens to be in the best form of her life right now. Well, she's a, a smart strike. She's out of uh, the very productive Cat Charmer, one of Mr. Adams' nice female families, uh, yeah. certainly a, a terrific broodmare band. Uh, there's some interesting stories to probably discuss about distance uh, for her and, and configuration and turf condition. Right. Yeah, she definitely likes a little cut in the ground. Which she doesn't got want perfect. It, doesn't want a real firm. Um, but and we also, you know, I think we're we're gonna look forward maybe towards the flower bowl or something like that. Uh, she's she's been productive at a mile and an eighth, and and you know we probably need to try the mile and a quarter with with things that lie in the future. I want to toss a question out there. I've been asking all the trainers to come into the weekday show here um, since the beginning of the meet, and I find it interesting as a handicapper and horse player. As a trainer, do you use the numbers? Any of the sheets? Uh, is that a tool in your toolbox? We do. We, you know, um, we do reach out and get those numbers. You know, especially when you're trying to make a decision and, and look, uh, you know, like like for example, these kind of things stretching out. You know, where, where numbers better at a mile, numbers better at a mile and eight. So, uh, but it, but you know, we've watched her sheet numbers, buyers, everything get get better as as she's moved on this year so it's all encouraging have a preference for the sheet you use uh, no <laughs> good answer uh, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna ask you also about uh, the the other uh, effort that uh, kind of got obscured I don't, I don't think we've got the video uh, let's talk about Capitain because this was a a major workout tab horse coming into that red hot first race yesterday and if, if uh, Brian if you can find the first race if you've got it uh, at hand we can talk about it because this is going to be a race that we're going to be looking back at there, there's no doubt well you know you know going in Traverse Day the two-year-old maiden race on Traverse Day is gonna always always going to be hot you know nobody wants to show up and, and bring one over there and watch him run poorly so we, we were pleased with this effort I think you know he obviously anybody that watched the race could see he wanted more ground and uh, you know you're really not looking for a tappet that wants to run three quarters of a mile. So we were pleased. He got a lot of experience. He hung in there. He took some bumping. He gave some bumping back. And, and uh, I think we'll move forward off of it. In terms, in ter there's a couple of things that are going on. He's a four hundred thousand dollar purchase. This is one of the one of the horses that you talked about that you guys had had bought uh, last year at, at Keeneland September. And he's a tappet. How many tappets have you had your hands on over these last few years? Uh, I, did, I had my hands on none until Mr. Adam came really? along. <laughs> so, it, so in terms of gauging their mental faculty and their maturity level, this will be a learning curve a little bit for you because everybody talks about you know them being a little flighty and a little not not difficult, but just and and not immature in in a stupid way, but just you know very boyish early on, and and until that light goes on, and, and until they you know they get the focus. Mo Heyman, for instance, he was one that was focused and, and, and not problematic, really, and yet he hasn't 
developed. Then right. there's others that have been immature and, and silly as two-year-olds, and they seem to be the ones that, that really get good. Correct. We've seen we've seen some of that in, in these horses. I, you know, I've got a couple of Tappet Colts for Mr. Adam this year, um, and one of them was, you know, this horse Capitaine has always been kind of on point and, and and acts precocious. The other one, you know, it's it took a long time to get the light to come on. I may run him here before the meet ends, you know, but he he was uh, he's a cold name spectacular Jack, and and he he just I, if you look at his work tab, I think I've worked him. Seven five eight because he just I could not get him to focus, you know. And he's he's uh, he's a horse that's that's actually you know come around nicely in the last few weeks. It's it's uh it's fun to watch one go that way because you know he until he went to the gate, I put some blinkers on him, I put draw reins on him just to get him up under himself and using himself, and you know he's kind of gone with the program and and gotten gotten a lot better. So um, it's encouraging to see. I think you know. He will continue to evolve, and and it's it's always fun to watch that development. And with this, and, and with this conversation comes the you know the the realization, the the reality aspect of you know not winning at the meet before yesterday. Right. You're at the mercy of the development curve of your two year olds in a lot of cases, or you're at the mercy. You know, I thought Gary was going to join us. Gary won a bunch of races at Belmont. And he, and he basically ran himself right out of opportunities up here and, and into tougher spots with the horses that had won at Belmont. Here you're explaining that you got two-year-olds that are, are not going to be those little June bugs, those those water right. bugs that are going to win at five and a half. Uh, no question. You're you know, and you're also dealing with you know injuries, things that set little setbacks. Uh, you know, when you're not dealing with large numbers, you know, you you have come up here and you think you've got you know five really live babies to run and. Next thing you know, you've got a couple um, because you, you know, you have to do the right thing by them and back off and send one home when they, when they're, you know, showing a need for it. So, uh, it's a, it's a process. Um, you know, it's great that we have we have some great clients that are committed to, to buying some two year olds and and uh, you know, hopefully we get things rolling. Well, you, Siaka, Donk and Baffert all get off the duck in stake races <laughs> over the last 48 hours. Well, that's great Pretty news. funny. Yeah. Pretty cool. And, and what about Cursor? I see Cursor. Uh... Cursor's a neat filly. Um, you know, I think her, again, distance is, is going to, she's going to love more distance ultimately. Um, but she's uh, she's definitely one of the classier fillies uh, that we have. I mean, she just does everything right. And, uh you know, it'll be fun to see how she runs. Well, she's uh, in the seventh today in that race. One of the unusual circumstances, actually, that you've got a, a two-year-old maiden group going six furlongs today, and nobody has started. It, you know, usually you've got, you know, one, two, maybe three starters, uh, maybe a couple of horses in, in those maiden races that have made a couple of starts. What you don't want is a horse from Asmussen making its second start because Correct. that's going to win. So you know, have you ever seen anything like it? It's, Six of them, I think, this mean? I'm not a gambler, so I don't I don't know that that stat. But it's that's interesting. Um, you know, I think any time a horse gets a race, you know, especially here, you get a race over the track. It's it's a it's an eye opener for these babies to go through the whole process from the. You know, you can school them and do all that and get them ready, but you really can't get them ready for what they're getting ready to experience on when there's a huge crowd here, especially on a, on a day like yesterday. Well, and there is a there is a sidebar to this horse, uh, Cursor. Uh, she's by the way, she's the eight horse uh, in the seventh, and she was bred by Mill Ridge out of Scarlet Love, the not for love mare. But uh, the fact that uh, she's by Quality Road, and uh, you train the mother. I did. I, I, I actually uh, bought the mother as a yearling uh, for, for, Mr. Uh, Evans. for Mr. Evans and uh, had a lot of the family. It's, yeah. it's a, and, and this, this, this filly's got a lot of class. And uh, I'm sure it goes right back to... Right back to uh, I don't know if she gets it from him. <laughs> in terms he of, was a little. In terms he of was not the most. Yeah, he was right. not the easiest uh, horse to be around. But uh, you know, it, it is amazing, Mark. When you look up pedigrees, and, and obviously the game is diminished any time you lose a guy like Ned Evans, but the lasting contribution—I I mean, I, I, so often—and it's only going to get—it's only going to get 
more pronounced right. over over the next generation of horses, the 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 families and you know, what what he was able to uh, to put together in, in a relatively short amount of time. Yeah, yeah, it was really uh, it was a great run. I mean, you know, he I remember going to the farm with that first uh, when I first went to his farm in Virginia, and he had probably twenty twenty five mares, and he told me I'm gonna build a broodmare band and have 65 mares and we're going to call out the bottom nuts. third every year and <laughs> you know and and you know fortunately we had a lot of really nice fillies and and uh were able to build that broodmare band and uh you know as his dispersal showed it had a lot of quality not not just quantity but real quality absolutely yeah yeah uh mark uh, delighted for you to win as big a spot there as you did and uh, thank you Steve. continued success thank you very much we appreciate you all visit. right okay uh, mark thank you the rest of the meeting. okay you, you got you got to stay here now for a minute okay. and a half as we close all right <laughs> so we go to a commercial and then come back why don't we do that are, are we that are yeah. we that uh, we, get, we that liberal with the uh, with yeah, the clock yeah yeah we'll go to a commercial and we'll, we'll come back and wrap things up on this edition of loose on the lead because well, clear, because clearly he doesn't bet so he's not going to help us pick <laughs> any winners uh, today so uh, yeah we'll let and champions are tested. Saratoga. And the excitement of Saratoga is now at your fingertips at CapitalOTBBet.com. Wager in.